All right, he's white. Beat him. They're tracking down and hunting down white people. And I'm not going to say what I want to say in a second here. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. But I will say, as I said at the top of the show, where the hell is our attorney general and our president of the United States saying that this will not be tolerated? Because they couldn't care less. And of course, this happens after the Saturday incident where there were riots on Saturday night after the police, a black police officer, shoots a black suspect with a gun. Yeah, so what's the problem? And uh, they don't know what the problem is, and they don't care. They looted and, and burnt down store after store. They bashed and ruined and, and, and shot at police and, and threw bricks and police cars and burned things. And that, you know, not a word from our president or our attorney general. Isn't that lovely? Joining us now is Jeff Reuter, executive director for the uh, St. Louis Police Officers Association and author of Fergan. I did this last time too, Jeff. Ferganistan, um, the war on police. The untold story of Ferguson. Obviously, it's a play on Afghanistan uh, Fer and Ferguson, Fergus Ferganistan, the war on police. Hello, Jeff. Good to see you, sir. Great to be back, Steve, which is under different circumstances. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, it never ceases to amaze me. I mean, what's your, what, what, tell me what's going on here, because it's not even, you can, the media can't even legitimize this in their own warped, sick, sick liberal minds by saying, well, another case of a white officer shooting an unarmed black. This guy had a gun. He was shot by a black cop. So what's going on here? And he was terrorizing that neighborhood. He's the kind of fellow that we ought to be targeting and putting behind bars. Uh, he's, you know, he's putting black lives in danger. If black lives matter, uh, then why does anyone have a problem with a black officer who nearly got killed by this fellow uh, trying to, to do what's right? Yeah, and, and again, uh, you know, it, it, you put behind bars if he, as long as he's not pointing a gun at a cop uh, in a chase right. and threatening him. Uh, but so, so what we have here, how do you react to the president, you know, pulls up on this golf cart, uh, the reporters, you know, he could have come out, he could have made a statement, and you know he would have made a statement if it had been the other way around or if it were a white cop and a black suspect and supposedly he was unarmed, even though that doesn't, necessarily mean that the, the shooting wouldn't be, have been legitimate. You know the president would have weighed in the way he did on Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown and everybody else. But he's just having fun playing golf while blacks are hunting down whites in the street. Yeah, I, I, I think the Obama administration will be, or at least should be remembered by history as, a, as eight years of missed opportunities. I mean, here's the perfect paradox. You know, you've got two young black men just months apart in age uh, one who's done everything right in his life. Uh, he's he's worked hard. He's pursued a career in law enforcement. He's done everything right. He did everything right that day. He used deadly force when he had to. And and you you counter juxtapose that against the the other side of the confrontation. A guy who's been in trouble since he was very young uh, is in, involved in criminal activity. Uh, has a gun that he flourishes at a police officer. Yet all the concentration is on the black police officer who's done everything right. And this is, this is in a microcosm what all these shootings are about, which is focusing on the wrong side of the confrontation. We ought to be focusing on the other side of the confrontation, not the police officer, the bad guy who's trying to kill a police officer who's engaged in some very bad behavior. Yeah, all right, now I wanna play a cut for you. This is a, a, an alderman, which uh, is an elected official, and his name is Khalif Rainey. Yeah, and my new he, he, he was standing there at the microphones uh, after the riots on Saturday. And, and, and basically, while he says he wasn't justifying what happened, he was basically legitimizing the threat that more of the same would happen unless changes are made and demands are met. Let's watch. Now, what has happened tonight may have not been right. I'm not justifying that. But no one can deny the fact that there's problems, racial problems here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that have to be closely, not examined, but rectified. Rectify this immediately, because if you don't, this vision of downtown, all of that, you one day away, you one day away. 
Well, that sounds like a threat to me, first of all. Uh, and secondly, it sounds to me like he is justifying it. And, and he doesn't want these uh, grievances examined. He wants them rectified immediately. How on earth do you rectify 50 years of liberal rule and liberal policies that have led to the black communities in this country, including Milwaukee, into the disaster that they are? Yeah, I won't deny there's a problem in Milwaukee. He's it. You know, all these politicians in the inner city who fleece their voters and uh, don't step foot into their own ward or district, the cops are the ones that are on the front line in those districts. That's how they end up in these predicaments. But, uh, you know, they point their blaming fingers at law enforcement when, when they go in these neighborhoods, they try to better the standard of life there by putting the really bad actors behind jail. And, and yet this, this fella springs up in defense of a criminal and would-be cop killer. It's insanity. It is insanity. And how does he get, and, and, you know, it begs the question, Jeff, just like you ask, how did these blacks get away on camera saying, get the white guy, and we don't hear from Loretta Lynch or the president, how does this guy, an elected official, get to stand there and do and say what we just heard him do and say? Well, listen, a, a, a guy like that, and there's plenty more just like him, they may be able to take our American political system hostage. They may be, may be able to take the media in this country, the biggest part of them anyway, hostage. But they're not going to take cops hostage. Cops are not going to to pander to this. They're not going to fold to this pressure. They're going to continue to protect the communities they serve, and they're going to continue to protect themselves when deadly force is, uh, is pointed at them. And that's what happened in Milwaukee. That's happened in one situation after another where cops have responded appropriately and the the riotous mob has not responded yep. appropriately. There's another word the media won't use, riotous and riot. Jeff, great to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. All right, and uh, always appreciate you coming on, sir. You know, it's, it's, it is insane. It really is insane. Um, it happened on the weekend. I watched the cable coverage. I don't think any of the networks interrupted their, their weekend pre-tape schedules on the, on the cable stations, cable news stations to cover this, but it's outrageous. It's just outrageous. I mean, there are videos, as, and, and you saw the one earlier in this segment, of, of, of black people hunting down white people by name, by, by, by ethnicity. Let's get there's white person, let's get, and nothing from our president or a Department of Justice, because they only care about crimes against black people. I truly believe that, I truly believe that. What could I say? The evidence speaks for itself. All right, to the phones we go. You want to weigh in, 877-NEWSMAX, 877-639-7629. First up, we have Kathy from Chandler, Arizona. Hello, Kathy. Hi. Hi. Am I on? Yes, you are. How are you? Welcome aboard. Hi. How are you doing, Steve? Good. You know, I have two things I want to talk about. Number one, the riots in Milwaukee. And I think it's an excellent you know, this is perfect for the people who want Trump in office because we are so sick and tired of the inactive or response that the president, you know, I saw the, the real where he's golfing today, you know. And the news people are there. They're not even asking him because they don't have the guts to ask him. They don't really but care either, Kathy. They don't really care mm -hmm. either. Their agenda is to cause racial strife and racial uh, hostility and flare-ups. And, you know, if it's a black, it turns out, as they knew at that point, that it's a black cop and a black suspect and that the guy probably had a gun, then, you know, their case is weakened. But we knew that blacks were, were hunting down whites and they didn't ask him. And the president, I don't believe, could care less. What's, no, what's number two? When Donald Trump gets in there, he, I believe he's going to take care of our officers because, you know, uh, President Obama just doesn't care about them. Well, we'll have a Justice you Department know? that is a justice for all department. And that's what he should say, too. And, uh, you know, uh, again, but I think that, that uh, Michael Reagan made a great point, uh, uh, and, and so did uh, Phil uh, 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 Rohrer, that um, we got to do what we got to do, Jeff Rohrer, and, and it, has to, uh, it has to change. What's next, Kathy? Second point. You know, Donald Trump, everybody, he's been the underdog. Never thought he would get to this point in the election. It's going to be him or Hillary. How does a man who has no political background step up to the plate, which I'm so proud of him to do that, and stand up to, the, to these career politicians for the American people, and it's divine intervention. Nobody's going to stop them. 
Well, I'll tell you, Kathy, I, I am worried about the polls. I am worried about his ability to communicate. I am worried about the fact he hasn't run any commercials. I am worried about the fact that he doesn't stay on message. I know what I would say. You see a, a glimpse of it every, every night here with me, how I would go after Hillary, what I would say about Hillary, and he doesn't. And I, I, I expected him to bring out the women that say Hillary threatened us. I expected him to bring out the military families who say Hillary lied to us. I expected him to bring out the woman who at 12 year olds was, was raped and Hillary got the rapist off and laughed about it. Haven't seen any of that yet, uh, Kathy, and we have to. Thank you. Wayne Allen Root is next. Don't go away.